now ready almost to start the timing and everything. Welcome, welcome very, very much to Conversations. A pleasure to welcome to the program a dear, 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 one more time, dear friend of <laughs> mine, Coley Clark, who is a friend of mine from Seems Forever, and she's been a civil rights leader from the beginning of things uh, in her own life and certain everything, and had association with the uh, civil rights movement, uh, and uh, it was involving Dr. King, and has been a pioneer in that and continues, and Coley, it's so good to see you again. Harold, it's always wonderful seeing you. No, truly. You're looking great. Well, I don't know how great I'm looking, no, you Harold, but you, you see, I'm in, my, I'm in my sneakers. Can you see my sneakers, folks? Well, those are really... I'm, I'm ready back. I'm back for hit the field again. Wait, 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 wait a minute, girl. Lift that sneaker yeah. a little bit. Show that gam. Hey. Look at that hey. gam. Hey. Now, there's hey. a gam that is a gam. Yeah, I got on my <laughs> jeans. I got on my sneakers. And I'm ready to hit the field again yeah, with the Steve Love Valley Coordinating It is so good to see you again, <laughs> darling. Now, look, we got a clip of Dr. King right there in Memphis and all that and all that kind of stuff and stuff. But let's go really quick, all right, because you're out of Mississippi, right? Mm -hmm. And you were at the Civil Rights, and you knew Stokely way back. You knew everybody, yeah, yeah. and everybody knew you that was in the Civil Rights Movement. It's still a huge issue that's confronting this country and the world and so forth. But give it a quick rundown, your own background, okay? And then let's get up to talking about we got a clip of Dr. King and so forth, and particularly celebrating the personage of Dr. King. Well, let me start with the last day of Dr. King's life. Okay. I get a call, my first husband and I were separated. I get a call uh -huh. from my first husband from Dr. King's room at 3.30 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And Dr. King it's asking, wanting want to know if we could not put the marriage back together and we, we, if the two of us would not come to Puerto Rico, uh, where well, he would I, work on putting a counsel in us and putting our marriage back together. Oh, I see. I had decided the marriage was over. Well, oh, really? Oh, that's over. at a personal <laughs> level you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so okay. I'm there at the last hours of his life, uh, mm -hmm. 3.30 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. It had been a long day for me. I'd spent a good part of the day with a young woman who was up at, um, at, at the women's college up at Columbia University yeah, there, right, Bernard right. College. Uh, uh, Bernard, uh, yeah. She was on her way to marry a very famous Harlem photographer. Uh -huh. And so Sherry Turner and I hung out. A good part. We had been hanging out for two days, but this was a good part of, a, of the day. And then in the afternoon, I was home, and I get the call from Bernard Lafayette Jr., uh -huh. the Reverend Dr. Bernard Lafayette Jr. these days, uh, wanting the marriage to be put back together and wanting Dr. King to be the counselor for that and for me to come. And he was connected with Trump? Who was God he was Dr. King's, uh, he was on Dr. King's staff. Right. Okay. Right. In fact, huh? Bernard was the youngest member of Dr. King's staff. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and it was Bernard that suggested the concept of a poor people's campaign, which Dr. King will, and his staff will put together. Yeah, and develop. Right, right. So right. this is the last hours, because Dr. King is going out with the poor people's campaign. Yeah, right up in Memphis. And so I just want to start with that piece yeah. because that can yeah. show you that, um, that 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 I'm there for the last hours. Though I didn't believe when I got a call from Sherry, at. Um, 7 p.m. that Doc was dead. I didn't mm -hmm. believe that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was a frightening moment for me in my life because my children were in Mississippi with my mother, mm -hmm. my two oldest sons. Mm -hmm. And so obviously me, I was on the phone to Mississippi and mm -hmm. mother told me everything had been taken care of, um, that things were all right. Oh, you got it, okay. Yeah, I'm right, fine. Right. Sorry. That things were all right um, and that I need not worry because all, the whole family had gotten there. My eight brothers had moved in, and well, seven of the eight brothers. Mm -hmm. One was already on, on, on the battlefield. I guess he was in Vietnam at this time. Yeah. But anyway, um, <coughs> so um, it was a really horrendous day. Yeah, yeah, it was you can Jack O'Dell, uh, <coughs> my good friend at the time, was in mm -hmm. California. Mm -hmm. And by 8 o'clock, Jim, I couldn't get through uh, because Bernard had talked with him at 3.30. I couldn't get through to the motel at Memphis, and so I spent all that time on the phone trying to get through, but all of the circuits were blocked. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So finally, um, at eight, about 8.30, uh, 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 constantly making phone calls, because yeah, I'm just yeah. insisting on knowing what happened to Bernard. Yeah. I might not want to be the wife again, but certainly mm -hmm. he's the father of my children and Boy, a friend. Boy, really and, a time of And so for me, you know, it's a whole lot, like a, whole lot of shaking going. What the hell is going on? Yeah, a whole lot of shaking going on. I can't find out what's right, going on you. in Memphis. Right, right. So finally, I get a Polish, and she told me she was from Poland. She mm -hmm. said, I know what you're going through, and I'm going to pull all the circuits. Uh -huh. She pulled the circuit. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. They put me in the room where Jose Williams answered the phone, Dr. King's um, staff member, Jose Williams, and told yeah. me Bernard had left at 4.30 yeah, for were, Atlanta. You and were was in on, the middle of everything. Yeah, then, and he was on his way back. Yeah, right, man. Um, so that at least gave me that piece of relief. Mm -hmm. But just as I get off the phone, yeah. coming in the door, James <coughs> Foreman, the yeah. executive director of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Coming in the room where you are? Coming into the apartment where I was at no. 55 Second Avenue, New York City, between 3rd and 4th. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, right. New York. Right yeah, above Fowl's uh -huh. Restaurant, across the street from my favorite, favorite, favorite restaurant. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh push it, push time. it. What is it? What's that <laughs> restaurant? Here, wait. It, uh, mm. it was a, the, 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 an East Asian restaurant that I enjoyed eating there food. I still do. Okay, good. But I don't want to, I don't want to advertise. You don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to advertise. But, <laughs> but uh, thanks for having all that good food getting her way. <laughs> But it was a it was a it was a powerful evening because we didn't know what to think. Yeah, absolutely. It was I so had an auntie calling me every ten minutes it seemed from Chicago. Yeah, you got all this personal stuff. Yeah, and because we'd been in Chicago, we'd been the Chicago event. movement. We left <coughs> Chicago uh, with uh, the knowing that Dr. King's hour was done. We yeah. knew that because Mayor Data was very upset. And as Lyndon Johnson said when he was running for office, yeah. if I had five mayors like Daly, I would need to campaign. Uh -huh. And Data was very upset with Dr. King for coming to Chicago in 65. Mm -hmm. um, so it was in Chicago that I spent quality time with Dr. King, but I wasn't hanging out with Dr. King. I mean, yeah. I've never was. So people say, do you know Dr. King? Yeah, I know him, but I was not close to Dr. Mm -hmm. King. First husband, yes, but not Coley. Mm -hmm. uh, second husband, yes, but not Coley. Mm -hmm. Dr. King and I were in Chicago where he's building the Union to End Slums Movement. Okay. It yeah. was critical because it was first time an organization that has spent its days mobilizing people. Mm -hmm. Remember, King is a mobilization that's person. That's right, that's right. So mm -hmm. this, he's in Chicago now to do an organizing piece. Okay. And of course, was unwilling to really call on student on the coordinating committee to come up and show him how that was done. That's Stokely. <laughs> that's Stokely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that would have been Stokely and yeah, others. Right, yeah. But, uh, James Foreman, who was who spent quality time in Chicago, uh -huh. uh, we needed those people to come up and show us right. how to organize right. the, 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 the most powerful concept, which is organizing a people, building for building, apartment for apartment, uh, block by block. Every 14-year-old has a union card. Mm. And you're dealing with all of the issues of the people. Yeah, right. Not one right. issue at a time. Not to mention the overall racial issue that was coming into a new way of being recognized. That's correct. That's correct. So we're Major in Chicago, issue on a, on a global scale. And yeah. we're in Chicago. It continues. Brought in me. by um, some really wonderful people. I was with the West Side Christian Parish, mm -hmm. uh, which is a part of the <coughs> Chicago City Missionary Society. Mm -hmm. But we were there with the United Auto Workers, Packing House Workers. Mm -hmm. These are the people that are bringing us in. On the other hand, we had some adversaries there. We had Saul Alinsky, who didn't want us in Chicago. Uh -huh. We had Mayor Daly, who was mad as hell oh, because yeah, he said right, that yeah. he'd brought Dr. King to Chicago frequently. Mm -hmm. And every time he said, I brought him here, and every time I bring him here, I feel soldiers feel. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't lying. He did yeah. that. Uh -huh. Mayor Daly was known as the cleanest city in the United States, Chicago. Is that right? Oh, really? yeah. Chicago yeah. was known. Had to, was a big sign. Welcome to Chicago, the cleanest city in the United States. Wait a minute, it's, it's known for, a, there's an awful lot of violence, many of them motivated. It got nothing to do with no. the violence, it was a nasty city. Don't no. open the door. Chicago is beautiful. Don't open the door and get the stench in your face if you're oh. in the slums. Oh, really? Okay, okay. So, uh, thanks, for make, <laughs> thanks for making things straight and understandable. Yeah, it's so, a little So, so going, yeah. going back to that hour, being there <coughs> I'm on this very urgent project. It mm -hmm. was an urgent project, and I say it's a project we must return to in this hour. Yes. If okay. black folk in this country are going to have a voice mm -hmm. that's going to be heard. Yeah. So when you talk about reparations or whatever you're talking about, yeah. you've got to be able to, as Frederick Douglass say, the measurement of man is how much you can take. Yeah. Right. It's how much you can take. Mm -hmm. But if mm -hmm. you continue that further, Frederick Douglass is really saying, if you are not ha having enabled your people to be able to show a forceful enemy that you are as forceful, yeah. or at least you can right. do some serious damage, yeah. then you might as well close your mouth well, and go Well, it was particularly hard in the 19th century, oh wasn't God. it? And, 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 and right on, he was a great uh, Oh, yeah, but Frederick Douglass. He Frederick a, Douglass. He's a great uh, orator and, and leader. Yeah, and yeah. in way ahead of his time historically, in Yeah, a he's sense. like King. Yeah. They're both were very unusual yeah, both, yeah. characters in that they were just both prophetic. They were both... Uh, 
just great speakers, had yeah. these great intellectual minds, but they wanted a good quote called Dr. King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because <coughs> they just seemed to be there. They just seemed to be born with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Frederick Douglass certainly without the education of a Martin King. Yeah, and he was way back in time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but we, to, to, to this hour, we mm. quote Frederick Douglass yeah. uh -huh. because of the power of his position. Yeah. But then there were some other great men in his time. Henry mm. Highland Gannett, since I brought up Frederick Douglass, I must bring up the other side. When you say Dr. King, you think Stokely Carmichael, Malcolm X. Mm. But when you think Frederick Douglass, you got to think Henry Highland Gannett, the father of black nationalism. That's Henry Highland. Mm. Garnett, G A R N E T. Okay, good. I'm they are both from I'm Baltimore, learning, yeah. Maryland. Uh, both Frederick and Douglas and Henry Highland Garnett are from Baltimore, Maryland. Okay, okay. They yeah. will go off in opposite directions, <coughs> though. Mm -hmm. uh, Garnett is younger, yeah. by a few days. <laughs> oh, days. <laughs> but oh, their yeah. positions in life are very, very distinct. Frederick, uh, Henry Highland. He was fiery, fiery Davis. Uh, Henry Highland Frederick Garnett, Douglas was fiery. In his time. Oh, yeah, and so yeah. was Henry Highland yeah. Gunner. They yeah. were both fiery. Yeah. But like Stokely, I'm just going to use Stokely yeah. and Dr. King okay. rather than Malcolm we're talking and Dr. Stokely King. Stokely Carmichael. Uh, but Stokely Carmichael, <coughs> no, Kwame Ture. The Kwame Ture, he took um, the name, yeah. This brother and Dr. King like had these opposing worlds, it seemed, mm -hmm. and yet they were the same. Okay. Henry Highland Gunner founded black nationalism at Troy, New York. Uh -huh. Troy, really? New York okay. is his yeah. base, and Troy, uh. New York is the home of black nationalism. Is that a right fact? Okay. Yes, that's yeah. a fact. It's good to get this down. But yeah. they were both preachers. Uh -huh. uh, Henry Highland Garnett's a preacher. Frederick Douglass is a preacher. And so I don't want to talk about Frederick Douglass and his church right now. So let me get, I just want to say that Dr. King is mm. in that same spirit. Okay. And you got this young boy called Kwame, called, excuse me, called Stokely Carmichael yeah, yeah. Mm. in the same hour. Yeah. And you got some very fine men like James Foreman, the who was the executive director of Student Unbound Coordinating right. Committee. If you see the film Selma, it tries to destroy all of those key Student Unbound Coordinating Committees. Student Unbound Coordinating Committee, SNCC, and yeah. I, mean, I told you I meant the jeans and sneakers. Mm -hmm. SNCC are uh, images for mm -hmm. us of these mm -hmm. great men who were very powerful in their own right in the same hour with Dr. King, mm -hmm. worked with Dr. King, mm -hmm. but yet at the same time yeah. there was these you know, you could have this, we could be together one day, but they pay, you could be here for the next. Well, it was, it was Because a, their yeah. philosophical positions were not always the same. Well, the, addresses, the issues being addressed were uh, still with us even, and are so monumental that they were ma major issues confronting and had worldwide significance. Right, but Dr. King needed, uh, needed SNCC in Chicago, and, he, and SNCC mm. wasn't there. Yeah. Um, and so we were why? forced why to. Why was uh, Kwame not? Why, because why? he didn't invite them. You got to invite SNCC. SNCC. SNCC has a right to, to, to its own space in history. All right. Yeah. And SNCC uh, was a youth wing. Yeah. Dr. King brought fine youth to Chicago, mm. many of them, mm. as organizers, but they were not equipped to organize. Uh -huh. They were equipped to mobilize. Oh, okay. Uh, so <laughs> Jose William came in. James Bebel was already there with his wife, Diane Nash Bebel. Uh, but you know, these people were figureheads in their own right, but they were not equipped to organize. Jesse Jackson emerges there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. while we were there. And I remember when we went to recruit Jesse. But uh, Dr. King is in Chicago, and he's there to build a movement. Yeah. That movement fails. Uh oh, okay, yeah, right. So right. Um, yeah. not because of Daly, but because the Jesse was not prepared for the kind of community organization that was needed to build a union movement. The okay. unions were there. Yeah. I remember going out with him one day, too, and that's when I got appreciation for him, mm. being out at the United Auto Workers headquarters, yeah. out about 100 miles out from Chicago. Mm. Um, this beautiful camp they had out there. I could get what the camp was called. Mm. But uh, we would go out there winter, spring, summer, fall, yeah. and uh, you know, just a big campground, beautiful mm. building. You go in and sit down, and everybody would sit around this huge fireplace that must have been 22 or 23. Uh, what time, what year frame are you talking about? We're talking about now 65, 66. 65, 66. Yeah. These are the years that I will spend in Chicago and will be close in a way to Dr. King. And you come out of Mississippi. I'm out of Mississippi, out of Jackson. And you and Kwame were down there together. Kwame came down to Mississippi yeah, he was, while he I was, was there. was Stokely then. You were hiding <laughs> under bridges with Stokely. Yeah, Kwame. I was, yeah, I was out yeah. under bridge with Timothy Jenkins. With the, with Jenkins, the law yeah. going over on top. Yeah, but you, she's the daughter of the whole thing, I tell you. She's one of the real fighters from the I beginning. I was a kid in those days. Yeah, yeah. Very young. Yeah, we were all very young then. Stokely was great. Oh, young. Really? Then. Stokely's a year younger he than was, I am. He was really funny. 
I don't know. Stuff was always. I he was, was always, so I thought funny, he was just man. so powerful. I think a lot of those guys have a good sense of humor. But carry on, please. But now, so what happens in Chicago is they be forced to move away from the Union in, in Slums movement. Uh -huh. And somebody suggested, I'm not going to say who suggested, somebody suggested that we talk about an open housing campaign. Mm. I was at the last meeting. Al Raby, Al Raby out of Chicago, was the head of the Chicago movement. Okay. Not Dr. King. Al yeah. Raby was the head of the movement. Uh -huh. A local brother who had done a great deal of work around education. And when the riots were taking place in Chicago in 63, yeah. Yeah. it's Al Raby that emerges. Um, you still have some other great brothers there with him. Malcolm X was still around yeah, Chicago yeah, yeah. in those hours. Right, right, right. Um, and so, <coughs> and we've got to remember that Dr. King is not only there, but Elijah Muhammad is in Chicago. There you go. And he's anti King. Um, I mentioned Saul Linsk is there, living out in Evanston area. He's anti Dr. King. Mm -hmm. But you've got another force there, and that is Dr. King's a preacher. He comes out of the Baptist Church. Yeah. In Chicago, which is the headquarters for the National Baptist Convention, is Reverend Dr. J. H. Jackson, who hates Dr. King with a passion. Is that right, really? So there would be these constant radio shows. Either oh, what would be the source of that hatred? What would be the source? Because of that? Dr. King was a radical, as they saw him, mm -hmm. and Dr. King uh, broke from his father mm -hmm. and was unwilling to follow the church doctrine as they laid it out. Dr. King was about but he was building a, man a of revolutionary. The he was a man of the cloth. They didn't care about that cloth stuff. Yeah, no. no. Uh, okay. James Jackson, and those folks got to care about their dollars. Okay. <laughs> their relationship okay. to white America. Well, yeah, that's a tricky And remember, business. the black yeah. Baptists yeah. are yeah. Southern Baptists. The Baptist is born in, in, in the South. It's not a Northern of them. Is that the a, Methodist, yeah. which is the oldest of the churches, is yeah. Northern. Yeah, 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 right. But the Baptists are Southern. Yeah. And so the church is split, splits into five different, that is the National Baptist, was split into five different units. And they were very, because very of different Dr. King, one from the other. Because, very different, because of Dr. King's work. Wow. And okay. Dr. King's refusal to pull off of talking about a national movement. Uh -huh. And he wasn't uh -huh. pulling away from that. Dr. Mm -hmm. King... Uh, quite as his kept was a willing, and many of the SNCC people didn't like him because we didn't think he was real at times. But we didn't understand roles and functions. Uh, well, his role was not to organize in the streets. Yeah. His role was not to be in the cotton fields like we were, to yeah. organize the people. His role was, was as a spokesperson, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. spokesperson and a definer of the movement, yeah. both nationally and internationally. And you could see it at his funeral. Jack would go to the funeral, I didn't. Coretta did send me the tickets, but I gave Jack one of them. Mm. Because Jack O'Dell had been pushed out once, and Dr. King brought him back to the joy of Jack O'Dell just before Jack, Dr. King that last year. Yeah. And so Jack organized here and wrote the Dr. King speech for his last meeting in New York City. That was the speech. And it would be at, 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 at um, Carnegie Hall, uh, oh, February okay. 23rd. Okay. Um, 1968. He was here. I would see him for the last time, up close and personal, as they say, yeah. uh -huh. at that meeting uh, with Arthur Davis and oh my God, with everybody. Everybody mm. was there. Yeah. But we didn't know he was on his way home, and by that I mean on his way to death. Mm. Uh, he was scheduled to have been in Nigeria on the seventh day of April, and mm. that had been canceled. He was scheduled to be in Brazil six weeks following his death, and uh, Abernathy and my first cousin, Bernard Lafayette Jr., will mm -hmm. go and make that, that meeting. But Dr. King, remember the can these Brazil was having these major national issues yeah. that was pulling the nation apart. Mm -hmm. Nigeria was in the midst of a so-called Nigeria be for war. Yeah, right. For more than I a, remember that. Well, yeah. More than yeah. a million people are dying. Well, yeah. Dr. King was being invited in to negotiate. A million people died? Over that? a million people. Oh, my God, yeah. And okay, so he yeah. was, he, 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 he canceled. I understand that that was canceled. Uh -huh. You never hear about that when you hear about it. I mentioned it now so the world will know yeah. those last hours. And <laughs> I want to start you. here because Good. we need to see the king, the man, the king who had long ago left 1963, March yeah. on Washington, mm -hmm. where he didn't come to deliver an I Have a Dream speech. Mm -hmm. Dr. King came to the March on Washington and his opening statement is that we have come to collect on a bad check. Okay, right, 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 right. he did, yeah. With right. the moral conscience of a nation, mm -hmm. that a nation who operated in bad faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we were here to collect on a bad check. So that's the first of the reparations pieces, but he's not looking at it through the monetary pieces as Malcolm did, Malcolm X. Yeah. He's looking at it straight on through the whole conscience of the nation, the foundation of this thing. Yeah, right. You know, right, are you sure worth are, anything yeah. at yeah, all? Yeah. 
And that has international implications too. If oh, you can get out, If you can get out to that, then it's still, it's still blowing in the wind, as Bobby Dylan would Oh my God, yeah. yeah, I love blowing in the wind. I yeah. love Bobby Dylan. Mm. Uh, so what we see then is King the Man from Chicago, no, leaving Chicago uh, after we went down, it was supposed to go down to talk about an open housing campaign. And within a few hours after they got there, we get the word that they negotiated a deal. Like, no. negotiated a open mm. housing, what? <laughs> this thing was so worthless that it was uh, not it, no, nowhere near as the Civil Rights Act of, of 70, 1875, which was thrown out by the United States Supreme Court mm. uh, around the issues of open housing, fair employment, all, I mean, not fair employment, but open housing, yeah. interstate commerce. If you go to the Civil Rights Act of 1875, it is powerful. Supreme is that true? Yes, and, and and that's thrown out by the United States well, Supreme Court. Where was that coming from? From people up north, or what? Where was that? It coming was coming from, from both blacks and whites. Everybody's been involved by 1875, now. 1875. 1875. You that's have way back. You have the first Mrs. Two senators already in Washington. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. two, two black senators. You yeah. got. Um, the, they're both out of the state of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They are there. You've got black <coughs> congressmen who have arrived, one very popular one out of South Carolina, and his backup, J.R. Lynch, mm -hmm. congressman out of Mississippi. Yeah, but was it really seriously able to move and get going and everything like that that early? They were I mean, able to do some very you know, serious stuff that nobody Frederick talks about, Douglas the Reconstruction was, Congress. Yeah, right. We need to look at that Reconstruction Congress and its contributions. I don't want to spend too much time on okay. it this hour. But one of the things that he gives us is, 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 is access. Yeah. Yeah. Access to an education right. comes out of a Reconstruction Congress pushed by two black senators. Two black well, black what year are you talking back in that You're talking period? about the 1870s. That's really way back. Yeah. No, but right, right, right. We only had 10 years yeah. of Reconstruction. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and this is when Reconstruction is dying. We're up to 1875. Yeah. But, but what we are saying is, though, <coughs> is that <coughs> that forward thrust was far more powerful than anything that got out going down there to supposedly to a meeting and then let somebody talk you into negotiating mm. an open housing bill. I mean, please, mm. give me a break. Mm. But we needed to get out of Chicago, and I'm saying we, yeah. because I'm sure that all of us who were directly associated would have to, in one way or the other, answer to the Daily Machine. All right. I am very blessed mm. in that I get, my first husband walks down the hall one morning mm. and says to me, Dr. King's on the phone. Mm -hmm. and, uh, wow. Because yeah. I tell you, I don't hang out with Dr. King. Jackie Jackson would always, come on, Cole, we're going to go over here. I'm not going over there. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I'm a loner. I like to stay to myself and do my work to myself. So I didn't hang out with the folk. I would go to meetings. Maybe you had a it. call from Dr. King and you just didn't I got, to I got it. a call. No, well, I, I did no. take it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought so. The my first husband joke. was so angry yeah. with me for taking it. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, but I don't know what Dr. King said to him. What did he say to you? Well, I said, that I said good morning, Dr. King. Yeah, well, says, that's a start. Yeah, and he yeah. says he was went straight to the point. He said, yeah. good morning. Yeah. I have on the phone with me mm. Mr. Swibel, mm. the National Director of Housing for the, not housing, yeah, the housing, yeah, housing and something else yeah, yeah. for the United States government. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And he wants to talk with you about that rent strike. You <laughs> 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 yeah. I, <laughs> I think about it and I laugh now because my first husband is falling apart. Mm. Uh, you know. Uh, what do you mean he's falling apart? He's just angry. You mean, yeah. I, I got run out of my campaigns. Anyway, we'll talk about that. I don't want to get there. It's uh, another right. story. It sounds but, to me like there's but some mother's sort of on the internal moon stuff going on. I cooked up know. with a group through but the West Side Christian Parish, Southern yeah. Christian Leadership Conference mm. staff, and we were one staff. Mm. I hooked up with a group uh, co called Reese Improvement Association, mm. led by a wonderful woman on the near west side of the first ward, which is Mayor Daly's ward. Uh -huh. oh, this, wow. is, this is the area <coughs> that they were burned 60 square blocks before it's over because they weren't playing when they killed Dr. King. Yeah. But I hooked up with that group, the Reese Improvement Association. They were working on issues, elementary school, these mothers, mm -hmm. from the oldest housing project in the United States. Well, uh, and that's the Jane Adams. Jane Adams. Jane a, Adams Housing Project. She was project. a pioneer, right. Yeah. And uh, the name for her, of course, yeah. the project that was from the Roosevelt era in 1938. Yeah. Right. And it's a federal project. And it's uh, surrounded by two others, Robert Brooks and Robert Brooks Extension. Mm -hmm. And so 
when I went down and I started talking with these women about the recent, recent improvement association, I was supposed to be doing fundraising for the West Side Christian Parish. That was supposed to be my job. Uh -huh. But uh, I went down there and uh, <laughs> saw these women and thought it was a good place to do the fundraising with. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to have some. You got to have some, some in your hand if you're going to talk about fundraising. Yeah, I and guess you, can't you do. Just, and you can't just have the fact that Dr. King's in town and that you at the West Side Christian Parish and, and you on the put, parish staff. Put something in the cup. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I go down and I meet with these women. Another brother from the parish is mm. Chris, had, another reverend named Chris. I can't remember mm. Chris's last name. Mm. He had invited me to do it. So I went mm. down and met with these women. Mm. They were the most amazing sisters on planet Earth. No, really. Yeah. Uh -huh. I learned that women in, in, in slums have PhDs in urbanology. <laughs> Yeah. Everything from police and welfare yeah. uh, to the damn precinct captain. I mean, they just know everything. Right. And so I got, I said, but they didn't know one thing. I opened up the, went over to Jane Adams' home and opened up the door mm. and I almost fell on my feet. Why? <laughs> Why? Because the stench, stench oh, of God. urine. Oh, yeah. This is yeah. the oldest housing yeah. project. Yeah. It's the housing project where if it's still standing, you can't hear your neighbor breathe next door. Mm -mm -mm. Because these thin yeah, walls yeah, that are yeah, in the other projects yeah, are not there. Yeah. This was built for whites. Yeah. It was built structurally sound. Mm -hmm. uh, built at the same hour. Remember that in 1935, uh, the nation gets its first welfare piece. Is that right? And it's for white women and their children. Not for blacks, and not browns, not reds, not What was that piece of legislation? Is that a piece of legislation? Yeah, that's a piece of legislation. What is that? Do you happen to know the name It's of? a Child Welfare Act. Child Welfare Act would have... Might have been one of the first pieces of legislation dealing with the systems that we're dealing with now. That's right. It's a Roosevelt area. Inequality Belt area. that is endemic. Yeah, that's a role of Roosevelt yeah. area. Yeah. And they're dealing with the mass poverty in the country. Remember, this is as 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 as, as, as the Great Depression poverty. is yeah. dying. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got all of these white sisters who don't have husbands, and yeah. they don't. Well, they're still the largest. Oh, it was a mess. It they're still the largest welfare yeah. group. Yeah. But you know, you did something. You did something. You did, and what they did was. The National Child Welfare Act set up to make sure that they got these women uh, monetary stuff. That, that, that was Roosevelt. Yeah, yeah, that's Roosevelt. The health yeah. care, yeah. child care, whatever they needed. Not black women. Black women won't see that until 1962. Okay, I got you. Though yeah, we're the ones yeah. associated with welfare. Yeah. It's always a lie. But Franklin Roosevelt, somebody to be recognized in oh the my historical God. We, we have to, we, He we, made a big change. A, 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 yeah. a super change that, yeah, right. that they, everybody, including Social Security, they're yeah, trying to they, tear down those now. Those things are, yeah. Oh, uh, and Trump Trumpkin Heppard, he's going to tear it all down. Mm. So what happens is, is that this housing project is a product of that. Right. Okay, for women right, in Chicago. Right. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And across time, they built the Robert Brooks and the Robert Brooks extension. I'm not, I can't remember the years on those two. Mm -hmm. But what happens is we, I, I go down and I, and I see this and I said, oh, no, uh-uh. <laughs> Sisters, we can talk about working for your daughters and your children yeah. in the school system sure. over here. Yeah. But you've got a bigger issue. Yeah. And we need to deal with the bigger issue. And I think we can deal, deal with it out of the housing project. Mm -hmm. So I housing, met with them. Oh, yeah, housing projects? Out of the housing projects. And these are dotted across the country? You no, know, the ones that are in Chicago. Yeah, right but now. they're there, but they're also They're all, they're all across parts. the country now. Yeah, I yeah. don't know how many of the federal. Remember, Reagan tried to close down many of the federal. Yeah, ones I think he might have. Yeah, yeah, right. So I don't know how many of them left. But the Jane Addams home piece was important for me because we founded Mothers on the Move. Mm hmm. Founded Mothers on the Move. Mothers movie. on the Move. When you say we, you and so I'm talking about the, you were the at, women uh, from Reese's Improvement Association. Uh -huh. And they're going to take it a step further. Making, remember, I'm fundraising. Making trouble. And I made <laughs> trouble. <laughs> I got trouble on the telephone. Yeah, yeah. I got Dr. King in trouble on the yeah, telephone. Mrs. Yeah. Swiper's on mm. the telephone. Mm, yeah. Right. Oh, I got a thing going mm, on. Yeah. So what I do is somebody told me that the Urban League had all of these wealthy white women. Uh-huh on their board. Yeah. So I sneak over to the Urban League. I know the brother, brother, if you're still here, I still love you. Yeah. <laughs> who, who, who? The brother who was running the Urban who League. Was, do you remember who I, I don't know his oh, name, I and I don't yeah. think he want me to call it yeah. either. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I mm. steal his board. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I went over and told those women what I was proposing that I needed an equal situation. If women in slums mm. have PhDs in slumology, yeah, 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 slumology. <laughs> if women in suburbs <laughs> yeah. 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 have PhDs in the other area. Yeah, right, right. And right, so right. they can come up in our own country and do fundraising, but these women and have the resources. Yeah. But these women also do things that women in slums don't have: is access to. Uh, PR skills. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just go through a yeah. battery of skills yeah. that come, critical skills that come out 
of these suburbs. Yeah. And the women I'm dealing with, I had Dora DuPont Williams. I don't know who that is. That's a, one of the DuPont daughters. Oh, DuPont, that's a big family. Of, that, 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 uh, the establishment the, family. The establishment DuPont. The, is it the establishment I had uh, uh, Falstaff. Sure Falstaff. I mean, I can just go through them names. I've been so and there was, there was something breathing. I had nothing but wealthy women. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the nouveau riche was my only poor people. And were they cottoning on to everything you're talking they, about? They were they, they, were they really cottoning they came on? In Did they to, come in with a vengeance? They came then? in with love. No, I'll be damned. But don't you ever do that, sister. Is there if still you want to build a fundraising piece, don't go near those women. <laughs> is there still hope in that? Is there still hope in that coterie or not? Or where I, is the I hope don't now, know. You know. Vietnam will make a big difference. Yeah, yeah. Vietnam is a, a turning horror. point. Wasn't it a horror? Yeah. It's a turning point. Yeah. And it's Dora But you're talking about the liberal establishment. I'm talking about the establishment. Yeah. Well, the, liberal. The, I'm talking about the wealthy, the wealthy establishment. Well, I'm not talking about government now. I'm talking about the wealthy establishment that runs the United States. Those are the women I got. Yeah, but the women, there are people who are women who are uh, uh, have some sort of progressive bent to what they're thinking about being able to encourage in this economy uh, or in this society. And those, are there still those coterie that's available? I'm sure to there's got to be some. I don't know what the wealthy group, how, how many there are left. But well, since I had the nouveau reach up to the very up to the establishment, well, you call it. nouveau reach is one. I had the, the nouveau reach as well. Yeah, okay. Because I had uh, Doris Conant, uh, whose husband's uh, on the Interstate Steel, and, uh, a sole owner. Yeah. I had the uh, also her father, her, his his father, uh, owned that famous paint company. I can't recall the name, but anyway, I had all of these people. They were Benjamin like Benjamin Moore. They were like no, and the poets. They were nouveau reach, right? Yeah. And I had to fight sometimes between the the rich, yeah, okay, because they were they, yeah. they were they were often offended that you know they're here in the room with these popo mm -hmm. called rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so they called them nouveau riches. So mm. I got nouveau rich in my vocabulary. Yeah, but I sure, had people from inland yeah. the wife of well, the president. Well, that would be the uh, wives inland of inland uh, steel, Bethlehem steel. I yeah. mean, these are the women on the well, board. Well, that, that, they would be the wives, perhaps, of some of the leading entrepreneurs who are making big changes in the economy and coming on strong, like our information people now. And so, but these women were uh, wonderful in the sense that. Yeah. They came together. They were able to come into the slums because the women from the slums were not going to the suburbs. Mm. The women from the suburbs were going to the slums. What for? To work on building Mothers on the Move. Okay, well, now that's something that we don't see much of now. We or don't do talk we? about it. Studs we don't see it much, or do we? Studs, to, uh, that, 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 I don't think we'll ever see that wealthy group in suburbs, again, from mm. the suburbs and in, in, in slums, uh, wherever they, if they're in the suburbs anymore. It's amazing that it, it happened, though. It, but it happened, and there were wonderful happen? women. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. So I had black women. There may be some revolutionary I, fervor coming out of that oh, element man, of society a, more than we might think. But we, I, I got and stuff particularly, these women are getting very uppity now. I, I, you know, people are getting but, uppity, aren't they? I, I don't know about who's getting uppity, but mm. women, black women, always been uppity. <laughs> we ain't had no choice. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, mm. so what was good was... Um, and the kids are getting uppity now. Oh, yeah, you see a million the, people in Washington the Remember, other day? Snick was kids. Yeah, well, okay. okay. So the, isn't the, mm. kids have always mm. been uppity. Yeah, well, that's But they're making an true. uproar now. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. They're lions and lioness, I'm watching them. Well, I hope they are, yeah. Well, yeah. as long as we don't let them... Yeah that the adult community, and that is my generation, yeah, right. does yeah. not interfere with Black Lives Matter, yeah. with Occupy Wall Street, yeah. and with this new group that's running up now out of, uh, as a result of the Florida incident and hundreds of like them across the street. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, yeah. the anti-NRA. Yeah. NRA is, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. And so National as long as we do, as long as this so-called women's upsurge, yeah. women does not interfere with those babies, mm. we'll get change in America. Well, I hope so. I hope you're right. Let me get one thing straight, though. And we're talking, I could talk to you for a thousand years, and we could just put a micro, I mean, you, you, mm. I love you. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Endlessly. Thank you. But we got a clip from Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, um, you know. Uh, uh, Let me say this piece, and then we're gonna yeah, go through the clip. Okay. Yeah. Let's get the clip. So Dr. Let's King sure is on the phone the with me. In. Mother's on the move. Is moved. The, I'm now the Chicago Tribune. Is said said stuff. Studs Turkle, who was so yeah. proper in the area. Yeah. I had enough nerve to be talking about me on this radio show. So, and I don't even know. I never even heard Stud it. Stud Circle was I, a big voice. Yeah. Oh, I loved him. Yeah, yeah, he, I'm yeah, glad yeah. he took me to his radio station. I'm, he did do I that? I never know. You he just talked there? about it. I never was on. No. It was always, I never even heard it. Yeah. Everybody else heard Stud Oh, Circle. he was a big so voice. So I'm, I'm yeah. now one of the things I'm going to try and do is capture all of my life for Chicago. But I wanted to go to the fact that Mr. Swibel is on the telephone. Yeah, okay, okay, go on. Sorry. And Dr. King said Mr. Swibel was one in the, in the rent strike. Uh-huh. 
which I got a group of brothers in an alley. In an alley. Called the, oh, yeah, I met an alley. In what town is this? Chicago. In Chicago. West side at that. In an alley, yes. But there'd been a riot. Yeah. And yeah. Um, there'd been a lot of friction between the Italian community and the black community and police mm. violence mm. galore. And so trying to figure out how we kept, kept the onslaught of police off the black community because they didn't come for the Italians, they came for the blacks. Is that right? Yeah. Right, and right. they, one brother, one girl, 10 year old was killed. They say it was her father that shot her out of the 10th floor window. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, where she was standing, mm -hmm. we yeah. don't know. We yeah. never know these yeah. things. Yeah. Um, but we do know she was killed. Yeah. And I'm up in an alley with some brothers who want to do some real stuff. And uh -huh. by real stuff, I mean the stuff that Stokely talked about, they were prepared to God do. God bless Stokely, Carmichael. <laughs> I love so, the guy. You know, so I remember more than anything else, he was so funny. Oh, even You I know, he was brother. so funny. He was so head up and everything like that. But he was Stokely so was funny. Serious I loved as, the guy. Stokely was Absolutely serious. Absolutely loved Stokely him. Stokely yeah. was as serious as a cancer that took him he out. He died in he Guinea. Was he died in Guinea with Bob Brown. That's where he, he was. He was Kwame really Touré. He took it. Yeah, yeah, and his funeral was here. With Marion Barry conducted it all. Yeah. But what happens is, is that I say to this man, look, yeah. and I met up there, I didn't tell him, I met him with this gang, mm. and it was a, the gang that controls all the gangs, but who also were involved <laughs> with the mob, <laughs> and I'm up in the alley with these two brothers, <laughs> and you know, as a Have young, you got any film on that? I dude? wish I did, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I don't. Could be a kind of I'm up there, I have these yeah. young men talking mm. about, mm. Uh, they're gonna go, 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 the go, alley go, gang, go, yeah. go jump, jump the yeah. police, and yeah, I yeah, said, you yeah, know, Wait a you minute. know, Mayor Daly's ward, Mayor yeah. Daly lives right across yeah, the, the, right, the right. Dan Ryan over yeah. there. Want to run over there and jump yeah. on his community, yeah, right, yeah, <laughs> his yeah. side of the near west mm, side. Mm. Uh, but uh, they just looked at me straight and said, "You know what? Well, I, I got some revolutionary stuff we can do." Uh, they they said this to you. Yeah. And no, what kind of stuff were they thinking of? No, well, they want to go over there and jump on. They, they want to jump with the police, shoot, uh, sh shoot, shoot, shoot them. shooting mats, more killing. Yeah. Yeah. Mats have been mm. ma been mass yeah, killing yeah, in yeah, this yeah, area yeah, here. Yeah, people are. Re yeah, right. And I told them I had a revolutionary piece, and mm. and I convinced them that the most revolutionary thing we could do mm. was to organize the housing project. Yeah, okay, I can hear you. Yeah. And the most revolutionary, yeah, that's, that's, and, and that's Chicago, but it's across the country, is it? Is and this is Chicago. It only, has I was relevance? Only, I, was, I was only referring to, to relevance to this hour. Yeah, I know. But I was okay. only referring to Situation Jane local. Adams' home, yeah, Robert right. Brooks and right. Robert Brooks' right. extension, right. Right. Roosevelt right. Road, and what was happening right then and Right, there. I hear you, yeah. And yeah. I had some backup from, I must remember, uh, the, uh, the, the very popular reverend there who was a famous nationwide Baptist reverend, and so he had been very good, very good to me. Do you remember his name? Uh, yeah, I do, but I'm not calling it. Yeah, it happens, um, yeah. yeah. But I, I'm up in the alley with these mm. boys, and they were my age, by the yeah. way. I think one of them might have been two years older, but Well, they if were they were your age, wouldn't you have called them men? You wouldn't be calling them boys. Well, I was a girl. Oh, well, okay, 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 okay. Whatever, it's just whatever, the way we talk up in there. Are yeah, you okay. up in the alley with some brothers they bought? Yeah, I know. I've got, the, I've, I've got the scene as a movie scene. We're in movie stuff here. I got the but scene as a movie But believe me, these are not only men. These were mm. powerful men. Yeah, right. The vice lord was in charge of all the gangs. Wow. -y. I'm up there with them and the member of the Spanish Cobra. Mm. And the Spanish Cobra <laughs> admits to being yeah. a service now of the vice lords. Yeah. Because the vice lords won the war. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I'm up in here with the two major gangs, the vice lords who are the controlling gang, and they're running dogs. Why did you stay the safe? The Spanish Cobra. <laughs> Why did you always stay so safe with the ladies' league in your life at the at the local? I still got my women. No, going I'm making on. a joke. I'm making a joke. I'm up here with my women. You my women are tough. In oh, fact, when some okay. men made some statements to me, good for you. Good I used to be concerned for the ladies. Because West Side Organization, which was a drunk black group that was mm. across the street from where we were mm. running Mothers on the Move. Mm. Every time those white women would move. drive up in their little fancy cars and get out, they would make woo calls and mm. da 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 these yeah. women. Mm. And so I said, Oh my God, I gotta go talk with these men. We got we gotta stop this. And one sister said, Don't you dare. Yeah. One sister, she said, Hey, you think I get this in the suburbs? <laughs> hey boys. <laughs> Man knows how to be a man, yeah, yeah, real man, yeah, right. So that husband yeah, was going yeah, anyway to yeah, Japan or yeah. whatever. They see him maybe guess, twice a year, so I don't guess that'll so ever end. Not that they got involved. Yeah. Now they mm. didn't get involved. Yeah, but not yeah, to my uh, knowledge, mm, anyway, mm, with the men. Mm, mm, uh, so uh, no, don't take my white sister's oh, well, light. I'm taking it all down. I'm taking it all down. It's well, going in the record. These well, the sisters was bad as hell. Take it from me. But so so the boys go in there organize the rent strike. 
and a lot more to the story, but I'm yeah. going to end it there. But mm. I'm on the phone with Mr. Swibel and Martin Luther King Jr. Mm, wow. Okay. And so I say to Mr. Swibel, are you prepared to meet our demands? Uh -huh. And he responds, yes, all 16 of them in the, uh, yeah. for the housing project. Yeah, now, yeah. two of them he could not have met. Yeah. There was no daycare center in the whole area. Yeah, yeah. So that meant that they were going to take space in the yeah, housing project yeah. for daycare center. There was no girl center. Yeah. Not even a Y, a yeah. uh, girls club in this entire area. Well, the girls normally don't make so much trouble. No, they just get pregnant. Yeah, well, that's true. So, so, the, so, so now they we get trouble. So now we get a girl center, we get a daycare center, mm. we get space for the women's for Reese Improvement Center to set up its meetings. Mm. Uh, but we also uh, get clean up. We get back racks. We get you know the renovation of yeah. the building, the cleaning that stuff. Uh, but we get no library, even though they said we get a library. They got to build a library. They got a. Yeah. They had a truck that came in twice a week. Mm -hmm to a community of 150,000. Yeah. You had this little library truck, mobile truck that would yeah. come in, yeah, you'd go right. out and get your books and go out and return your books. There's still a lot could be done in the city of Chicago. That's, this is back in the day now. Yeah, this I know, is 19... but you still a lot of, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, it's, it's, it's a Chicago is, uh, Chicago a is rough. Town. Yeah. And I'm on the roughest side yeah. now. Uh, I'm on the rough side of I town. I know, in an alley <laughs> with the young men. Yeah, right. I got to see and it in, in my mind. My I'm a little first worried husband is probably for like, you, oh my, my God. Glad She's you're telling here everybody and not again. There. My Still wife is, to... the Reverend's wife yeah. is down there in an alley with yeah. these men. You scare but, uh, me, girl. Yeah. But we got, we, we got at least uh, the commitment from the federal government to begin. Okay, okay, good. Now, yeah. I did not go back there again because I had some threats. And it wasn't from that's physical threats. Right? Physical threats and, yeah. and a missing sister and a mob. And, and these aren't just little afterthoughts by no, people. These, these are, are not serious. Little afterthoughts. Yeah, I understand. So, yeah. But, Most of I, us but don't I still deal with Carrie Bay would remain there. They lived there mm. and she carried on with the work. And when I was doing poor women against the Vietnam War, yeah, nineteen sixty seven, we had yeah. the Mother's Day demonstration yeah, remember, yeah. Uh, right here in D C. Don't forget she Day She came over and brought over two bus loads. Don't forget the, the Democratic problem in sixty eight was in Chicago with Abby Hoffman oh my and God. all that too. Yeah, yes. it was a time of real, and Bobby Dylan Man. singing uh, 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 and all that kind of yeah, stuff. It was, blowing it was in the amazing wind. time. It was blowing no longer in blowing in the wind, it and was it blowing in is. the face. Now, we got a uh, clip. Do we want to try and yeah, get yeah, that in? Yeah, I want to look at that clip. Yeah. But this is where... The trouble is you're too damned interesting. Could you slow down and be a little more dull? I don't think you're capable of being hell, dull. Who could be dull with a hell channel? No, I just, I, no, I've got an opera. Uh, we got a clip, and shall we get it? Yeah, we I think we need to see Dr. King. Yeah. Shall we do it? We got a clip with Dr. King. And this King. comes from the Veterans of the Civil Rights Movement website. And this is, um, and this is, uh, set it up when it was and uh, what's going on. Well, what happens here, we're going to take a look at the last two months of Dr. King's life. Okay. Most folk are looking Giant. at him from 55, but let's look at the last two months. And really the last year, because it's at Riverside Church, April the 4th, 1967, yeah. that he yeah. talked about a time to break Yeah, silence. that was a big thing, yeah. yeah. Okay, so here we all go. of this is one piece from 67 yeah. Yeah. straight through here to the end. Okay, let's have it. And volume. here's Dr. King with the Poor People's Campaign. Yeah, right. And the Poor People's Campaign that he's organizing represents all the poor. Yeah, right. Poor whites, poor blacks. No. I'll never forget a sister speaking that, and then I'm going to let Dr. King Wait a minute, are we speak. hearing time? Are we getting vol volume on this? Uh, jo Josie Ann, is there volume? Is there uh, audio? And she's checking to see whether well, see if we can kick it in or not, or maybe we can just talk over it until she does. Well, I think what they, what, what, mm. what, the, what the script is doing is bringing us. Yeah, you talk to it. Talk, series talk to the because script. we're having across the country. Yeah. Nothing but riots and violence. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. And so-called long hot summers of discontent. Yeah, right. right. Back again. It is on the volume. No, it's not. There's no volume. No, I'm not do it again. We'll just. We'll, we'll just go ahead. It's let it go. Right. We'll it's talk all right. over. It's all right. We don't have to, okay, she's going to So what something. we're having, uh, oh, she's, uh, uh, she's, is she taping? I don't know what she's doing. I guess we just keep talking. I don't know what she's doing. But across the country, yeah. Newark, St. Louis, Detroit, Chicago, 
there have been these riots, y yeah, major right. riots. Well, yeah. well, the issues are still there before the human condition. Yeah, I mean, That's the correct. human situation That's correct. That's is correct. very dire. Yeah, it's very dire. So this yeah. violence, the press has been Dr. King's face with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying, you know, what, what's, what's going to happen with these long, hot summers of discontent? Yeah. What, what are you going to do? You know, calm these black folk down and put them to yeah. sleep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. And Dr. King. Uh, yeah. I want to make sure she's got what she's got before. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Really. Okay, here she's coming. Uh, maybe they'll get. Anyway, keep talking. There, cause so what happens is talking. Dr. King um, mm -hmm. is now coming to a. His point. life. Okay, they're probably go, they're probably gonna go to the beginning wait, of it again. Well, we're not going to be able to show the clip then, is that it? Yeah. Dr. King faced the idea okay, that civil rights go. alone could not solve the problem of poverty. He roamed the South, now trying to gain twice. support for poor people's campaign. Its goals, full employment, a guaranteed income, and decent housing for every American. The campaign would recruit among all races, bring them to Washington, force the government to respond, a nonviolent army of the poor. All working together to solve the problem of poverty. We are tired of working full-time jobs for part-time income, and we are tired of not being able to find work. And it didn't cost the nation one penny to integrate lunch counts. It didn't cost the nation one penny to guarantee the right to vote. Now we are dealing with issues that cannot be solved without the nation spending billions of dollars and undergoing a radical redistribution of economic power. Yes, yes. If our nation can spend $35 billion a year, to fight an unjust, evil war in Vietnam and $20 billion to put a man on the moon. It can spend billions of dollars to put God's children on their own two feet right here on Earth. This is a reality. Now, when we come to Washington, we are coming to get our check. Now, very frankly, this is a search for an alternative to riot. The riot is the language of the unheard. And what is it that America has failed to hear? It has failed to hear that the promises of freedom and justice have not been met. All we say to America is well, be true to what you said on paper. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But if a man doesn't have a job or an income, he has neither life nor liberty and the possibility for the pursuit of happiness. He merely exists. We are demanding an emergency program to provide employment for everyone in need of a job. Or if a work program is impractical, a guaranteed annual income at levels that sustain life in decent circumstances. This is a new beginning on the economic front. The Poor People's Campaign was about economics. I mean, what happened to that whole movement? It's almost as if it wasn't, it disappeared. Wait a minute, wait a minute, it didn't disappear. You might forget Martin Luther King was assassinated in April. The Poor People's Campaign was supposed to go to Washington in April. So the organization that mobilized it was essentially decapitated and thrown into chaos about three weeks before it was supposed to happen. The realistic fact is that we still have a long, long way to go. Now, I'm not one to lose hope. I keep on hoping. Uh, I still have faith in the future. Now we're going to march again, and we've got to march again. People will come to see that not only is something wrong in general, but something is wrong in particular in their own economic situations. Constantly trying to make ends meet, but because of either no job or a job that is so economically unprofitable that the person can't make ends meet. And I think they see all of these things, and more and more, they are coming to see them. Okay. All right, boy. Oh, yeah. well, yeah, we, we, we're looking now at that yeah. last hour, so if you can remember that I I have him on the phone in Chicago in 66. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. That's the summer of 66. Yeah. And now this is 68. Yeah. Uh -huh. As I said, we were at the Du Bois Centennial yeah. here in 68. Um, 
68 was a magic time. Magic time. It was, it's a ma it was it a time of was, transition. It really. was actually 67 when he says it was a time to break silence. Mm -hmm. And Dr. King just began to be open and be vocal and to come out and, and really express what he really meant. Yeah, it was, it was a time of stirring at all levels of society. There was something blowing in the wind. Bobby yes, Dylan said was. to a whole wide world that took note that there was something major going on. Yeah, that was, and that's that, a, that, that was 61. Still, <laughs> that's still there to be discovered yeah, that, that, by our leaders. Yeah, but you know. What it is that uh, has to happen. At this hour with Dr. King, what you see happening with Dr. King, the man, and his, mm -hmm. his last work is a testament of hope. Yeah. Is yeah. published in a volume of his edited work, a volume of his works, an edited volume by Washington. Mm -hmm. And I am very impressed with the opening three or four paragraphs of A Testament of Hope. Uh -huh. Because he says, you know, the press comes to me all the time yeah. asking me about these long, hot summers of discontent and what yeah. I think about. He said, I embrace the violence. Yeah, right. That I embrace this violence. He didn't say he was against non-violence, mm -hmm. but I embrace the violence. That I understand that black it's men. King, you're talking King. I'm talking Dr. King now. To you, Th through me. I'm talking Dr. King through Dr. King's last work, uh -huh. A Testament of Hope. Okay, yeah, all right, and good. Spell it's it online. Out. Yeah. And he said, I embrace the violence. That I understand, and I'm paraphrasing him here. I yeah. understand that black men. He mm -hmm. didn't say women. Mm -hmm. Black men, because I think of that, you know, we can see yeah, that this, yeah, it's a this, time. this, this yeah. is a conclusive yeah. piece for all of yeah, us. Yeah, right. Well, inclusive for both Yes, indeed. Both blacks. indeed. But that black men have been since Reconstruction, since, you know, under nothing but violence. Yeah, and yes. Oppression. Yeah. And that they have a right to rage. Mm, absolutely. That there is a no right doubt about it. to rage. Yeah. And the brother out of California who, um, had done, was d dealing with the work at that time on rage. Uh, yeah. uh, in fact, it was, it was his birthday was a couple of days ago, too. Um, I don't know, I'm getting old now for sure. I don't know why I can bring up that great man's name. You're doing but, great. Uh, <laughs> You're doing great, girl. Yeah. But, you know, that right to rage. He talks about that right to rage. Mm -hmm. But he goes on to say that America's got to come to grip with the fact, which what he's just said, uh -huh. is that, you know, it didn't take but a few pennies to talk about desegregating some schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what? What's a few black politicians? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That there will be billions upon billions, and he talks about the violence that will come when America, because America is going to have to deal with the fact that it's got to reconstruct. And America, the black if I may, uh, America has yet to f discover what we're going, to, what is going to happen in that regard. Much less the larger world is also asking the same question to themselves. That thing the kids did the other day down in Washington was a harbinger of a sense <coughs> of disquietude by a whole lot of the world who's saying, look, there's something wrong here. There's a possibility that's blowing in the wind, like Bobby Dylan said. That's right. And our leadership does not have the vision to accept the situation that has to be done in order for us to realize that dream. So we need something new, and it's being uh, the, the, the challenge is still there. Uh, as we talk in this year, uh, 2018, mm -hmm. the same challenge is being felt around the world. The threats are still there, and yes. the lack of justice for the world population it's a very is, not even, now, is not even glimpsed. Yet. This is a very frightening now. We have not even begun to. <clears throat> but Dr. King is a harbinger he, of He is a that. harbinger of that, yeah. period. And so yeah. when he begins to talk and about Coley that. And Clark, too. And you see, uh, well, those whole thousands of people. That <laughs> millions, <laughs> that million, that. million yeah. in, in but, Washington uh, alone. Yeah. But when we look at the coming together of all the poor, yeah. and yep. we recognize and that that's the most white of the poor. Wait, that's most of, I'm talking world. This, is, is, that's the more world. That's still the world. Not just the world, that's America. Not only America, but yeah, the but world. world. No it's a larger it. context that's that right. is going to be So when we look at this of. last capitalist six or seven hundred years, it has been devastating. Yeah. But if we look at at, at the Poor People's Campaign, and I yeah. want to look at it because it's been recalled. Yeah. The Poor People's Campaign has been reinitiated by Reverend Barber. Okay. And it's Reverend Dr. Barber. Yeah, right. With more yeah. money, who was over in North Carolina. Yeah. He reinitiated re it out of Selma, Alabama. Okay. Yeah. There was a, there's been a meeting here on April the 9th somewhere in town, St. Bob's Bartholomew's Church. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not too clear about that one, uh, mm -hmm. if it's connected to Barber, mm -hmm. but it's the Poor People's Campaign. Yeah. So people are back on track talking about the Poor People's Campaign. Yeah. And, 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 and New York, we don't want it to be what happened with the first one. I was at the closing of the Resurrection City in, after Dr. King's death 
because I had not been out there with the campaign. Mm -hmm. I was four months pregnant. Yeah, well, that's a that's so. A, that's <laughs> so another. Jim Foreman had got me back up and running again, mm -hmm. and I uh, went down to D.C. probably looking for my first husband, but I went down there. <laughs> <laughs> running that, <laughs> ready for war. Running him down now. Doing yeah, what the women do. You know yeah, women, yeah, we yeah, got to yeah, take yeah, care yeah, of yeah, ourselves yeah. and our yeah, children. Get down with the politics. Get down yeah, with so, the, um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, and yeah. while I was there, but those things are important. we're yeah. sitting in a car right outside of Resurrection City. Now, Resurrection City had been established in 66, and this is what's like the culmination for the poor people who were coming in. Right. And it was hundreds upon hundreds of people, a little pond outside of D.C., mm -hmm. or in D.C., Yeah. And this little pond is where they built this whole camping ground. Okay, yeah. Now they had not resurrection cities, but we had these camps all across the south where people right. would run off plantations. They would build camps outside of yeah, the plantation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were all across, the, yeah. especially Mississippi and Alabama yeah, region. Yeah. But um, resurrection city was a national one. Yeah. Yeah, okay, and yeah. It was primarily blacks in there, but there were a few whites. Try to be a, a, a model. Like That's that. right, a model yeah, city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was standing in the car, and I'll never forget a little sister out of China that they call Red Guard, very mm -hmm. brilliant young woman. I don't know where she is today. I lost mm -hmm. contact with her. Mm -hmm. But she said, look. And I looked, and yeah. all I could see were these mass things. I don't know what it was. It looked like monsters. But it was a D.C. police. Oh, my God. Oh, with and other oh gear. Oh, my God. Yeah, they yeah, came yeah. in. It's like, and I just heard somebody screaming, let's get the babies out. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's it's very worrying of just out and out fascism. I'm very very worried about so the mad in my, my, No, I was back in my brother's days. I yeah. was ready to fight. I'm yeah, gonna be yeah. very frank. I'm still ready to yeah, fight, yeah, but yeah. I got good and gassed. Yeah. Pregnant. Yeah. But I went in there and I pulled babies out. Mm -hmm. One sister, Beverly Sterner. Yeah. A uh, white you. sister got yeah. over two hundred stitches. Oh my God. Tall sisters, they just ripped From her. What? Yeah. Ripped her. Yeah. But we went in and we 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 fought. We with the damn some mask. Mm -hmm. You look like monsters or what something. What did you say? Oh, gas masks, you said. Yeah, gas masks. Yeah, yeah, mask. yeah, yeah. You, you look know, like you something out of a, a horror movie. You may yeah. ride your back and take that yeah. thing off. Mm -hmm. But uh, we went in and we got the children out. Good. I my phone. God, please forgive me. But we got to take uh, care of the children. Yeah, we went right. in and we got, to, got many of the children out. It was frightening because it came so sudden that people were just in panic running from the camp. Yeah. But uh -huh. they closed Resurrection yeah, City. Right. I yeah. went to the hospital along with tons of others. Uh, I went ready to be treated for a um, But don't don't we agree here? We only got a minute or so left, honey, you know, and everything like that. But the vision of Dr. King, the vision of all Stokely and you and the people like that, that vision is yet to be realized by the world society in a way that calls the, to question all of the things that were being called to question then, and it still is with us. But to put together what Dr. King had put global. together. it's now global. It's now global. Yes, global. It's, but getting, to put, it's getting all around the and world. And we saw the global at his funeral. Mm -hmm. Because at his funeral, and Jack O'Dell, I said, I gave him my ticket. And my uncle, who was a reverend out of Atlanta, mm -hmm. took Jack. In fact, Jack brought Jack in because Jack was really wiped out. He just didn't believe that, yeah. that his good friend and compatriot was gone. But what was wonderful about it is that We had Dr. King was a great inspiration, and there's a fight that goes on, and it may be melding. It's like it's like a, a melding of something that's coming, like a like a, a a thing that's getting to the right temperature for real qualitative change and a liberation of the masses of the people that may be blowing in the all of the African heads of state and representatives of those movements were at Dr. King's funeral. Nobody yeah. talks yeah, about right, that, right. and they had that pen with the King is dead. Yeah, they came from India. They came from all over Asia. Uh, they came from Europe. They were there to say goodbye. Yeah, but we got to say goodbye to but the audience. Yeah, oh, no. We're out of time. Mm. Harold, we're out of time for I'm this I'm never program. out of time with you, Harold. No, no, no. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you for viewing and everything. Uh, and so, and thank you very right. much. So good to talk to you. Always, Coley. The, the, the fight goes on. Yeah, well, this is my last hours, and sometimes I just break down and cry. I know, I know. I do the same. Remembering uh, 